Premium quality football shirts at an extremely affordable price. Sound good? If so, check out the sponsor of today's video, jerseyfifa.com. You can see that I've sent these some shirts and they really are top quality. So make sure to click the link in the description to go find a shirt for yourself or perhaps as a gift for someone else. And you can now use code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. That's code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. I really do recommend their products, so go take a look. Now let's get into the analysis. So the form of Bruno Fernandes this season has really epitomised Manchester United as a football club this year and it seems to be a pretty good symbol to reflect some of the things that have been going wrong at the club this season. I say this because on the pitch Fernandez has spent this season making a lot of poor decisions on the ball, regularly leading to him losing possession for his side and despite some impressive stats he hasn't had the greatest of seasons. As a result it has led to question marks over whether or not his place in a team should be under threat. Some think he should have been dropped at times this season, whilst there are also those calling for Ten Hag to drop him as we head towards next season. But at the end of the day, despite his poor form this season, he is undoubtedly a world class player. You don't produce the goal contributions that he has produced in the past three seasons unless you are a truly talented footballer. I mean, just take a look at these numbers from last season. For a midfielder to be getting this amount of goals, even with penalties, is just ridiculous. And of course, at the same time, he was also getting plenty of assists for his teammates. Something else that Bruno Fernandes was doing well before this season was his mentality and his work rate. And in this way, he was a real leader on the pitch, with the way that he would work hard for his team to win possession back for his side. As a result, there were a lot of people that wanted Bruno Fernandes to be made club captain, thanks to his excellent leadership traits on the pitch. But for one reason or another, we have not seen the same Bruno Fernandes for most of this season. But with him just signing a new contract at Manchester United, it is now up to Bruno and Eric Ten Hag to try and bring him back to his best. So I want to try and take a look at a few different ways that Ten Hag may do this. As I've been saying continuously over the past month or so, Ten Hag is an extremely tactically flexible manager, so there certainly are a few different options or tactics that Ten Hag could look to use to get the best from Fernandes. The first thing I want to discuss is whether or not Fernandes could be used in a similar sort of role to the one that Hakim Ziyech played for Ajax back in 2019, because that year he was absolutely brilliant and crucial to Ten Hag's system. Ziyech's role in the team that season was to act as a wide creator for his side, as he'd regularly start the game on the right hand side of the attack, from where he was then given the freedom to move infield onto his stronger left foot. Having moved inside, this is where Ziyech really came to life with his ability to glide forward on the ball, before then trying to link up with his teammates, with quick, short, sharp passing in and around the opposition's penalty area. As well as trying to create for others, we would also regularly see Ziyech looking to fire shots at goal from outside the box, and it really became Ziyech's trademark if you like, looking to cut inside onto his left before bending shots towards goal. We also often saw Ziyech crossing into the box as well, and if Bruno Fernandes was able to play in a similar way but from the left hand side instead, it would be an excellent way to float crosses towards Ronaldo at the far post. Could Bruno Fernandes play this sort of role? Well in my opinion the answer to that is yes, and we saw it in a recent game against Brentford when he started on the left hand side, and personally I thought it was one of his better performances of late. Fernandes also played in a similar role in the embarrassing defeat against Brighton, but again I thought he was one of the few players that done well, so there certainly could be potential for Fernandes starting on the left before then cutting inside onto his right. If Fernandes was to play this sort of role then the crucial thing would be for the left back to make overlapping runs in order to provide the width for the attack in the final third, and this sort of role certainly could suit someone like Luke Shaw. Overall, I do think that this sort of role, starting on the left hand side, could be quite good for Bruno Fernandes, and playing out wide with more space could be the best way to get the most out of his brilliant creativity in the final third. However, as I said at the start of the video, there are a couple of different systems that Ten Hag could look to use, with him changing tactics again this season, so let's take a look at what his role may be if Ten Hag uses the same system with United. So personally I think that the best role for Fernandes to play from this year's Ajax side would be in an almost Bergwijk-esque sort of role, playing in the centre behind the striker, operating as the main creative outlet for his side. Despite starting in the centre, Bergwijk has often shifted to one side slightly, with one of the midfielders joining him from deep, and we can see him here as the number 23, playing in a 3-2-4-1 for Ajax. From this position, one of the most important roles for Bergwijk has been for him to drop deeper into midfield areas, allowing him to get the ball into his feet, before then looking to turn and try and progress the ball for his side. 
As well as dropping deep to progress the play, he has also had a big role to play higher up the pitch in and around the final third, where we have regularly seen him making key passes in towards his fellow forwards in and around the opposition's box. As well as playing through the centre, we have also occasionally seen Bergui dropping into slightly wider roles, from where he's been able to get himself a little bit of time on the ball, before then swinging deep crosses into the box. On top of all of this creativity, he has also provided goals this season, scoring a total of 12 goals in all competitions for Ajax this year, and this has been crucial in the title push that Ajax have made. What we can see, even just from these brief few points, is that Bergwi has been given a reasonable amount of positional freedom in this Ajax side, allowing him to roam about the pitch into different positions to try and receive the ball in space. He's actually one of the players that has been given a bit more freedom to lose the ball, and by that I mean that Ten Hag has given him the license to try things in possession, even if it's high risk, because it can of course be high reward. Again, this is probably music to the ears of Bruno Fernandes, because when he has been at his best for Manchester United, he has been in a position and role where it is okay for him to try high risk passes in the final third of the pitch. If we look at the two FB ref reports and focus on the pass completion, we can see that their success rate is separated by 3.2%, highlighting that they are both players that take risks on the ball, and this has worked for Bergui this season. Whilst this role has worked for Ajax this season, there is no doubt in the fact that Fernandez needs to refine his game, and whilst it is okay to play risky passes, Fernandez needs to learn when to play risky and when to keep it safer. With this in mind, I think Manchester United fans will be hoping that Eric Ten Hag is the man that can come into the club and help Fernandez in this way, helping him to really develop and refine his passing and importantly his decision making. But if Ten Hag is successful, then he could be the man that really brings back the old Bruno Fernandez. And as I keep saying, if he is able to refine certain sides of his game from a tactical point of view, then he could be a key player. At the end of the day, he has so much to offer to this Manchester United side, and even in a rather poor season, he has still created a ridiculous amount of chances for his teammates, so his value to the team is clear for all to see. As I was saying at the start of the video, Fernandez also has plenty to offer to this side out of possession as well, because he is a player that demands hard work from himself and his teammates, and this is obviously crucial to winning the ball back. Just the fact that he is such a hard-working player makes him a valuable asset, although this is another area of his game that does need tactical refinement, because at the moment he does make a lot of mistakes in the high press. The main mistake that Fernandes makes is that at times he gambles too much in the press, as he looks to pounce forward to cut off a certain passing lane, but in doing so, he leaves another player completely free to receive the pass. Again, this is why Fernandes needs coaching. He has the work rate and determination to help his team defensively, but he simply doesn't have the awareness to match, so again, with a little bit of work in pre-season, we could see him improving. I do actually think that this will be an important thing for Ten Hag to get right, because Manchester United's press is currently non-existent, or just absolutely awful to watch, but Ten Hag's work in his department will be meticulous. I do think that Bruno Fernandes really could be perfect for this sort of high-pressing role in attacking midfield, and he could pick up some of the slack from Ronaldo, which I was speaking about in a recent video, so make sure to quickly go check that out. I do think he is the key to any pressing structure at Manchester United, and even Rangnick, who has outed several players, seems to like Bruno Fernandes, so that alone suggests that he is a player with the required mindset. However, as with all of the changes that Manchester United and Ten Hag will be making over the next 12 months or so, this is going to take time to get right, and there will need to be a lot of work done in training to get the press working. Ultimately, I think it's up to Bruno Fernandes now. Ten Hag is the sort of man that will be able to give him the right instructions. It's just on Fernandes and whether or not he is willing to learn and take these new instructions on board. If he doesn't, then Ten Hag will not hesitate to get him out of the team. But personally, I'd like to think that Fernandes will take these instructions on board to really develop as a player. And as I keep saying, I think he could become a key player like before simply because he has so much to offer to this Manchester United team. He's talented, hard-working, and he seems to be a good leader. So if things go right, then he could be the perfect man to rebuild the team around as the team moves forward. Or it could go the other way, and we could see someone like Donny van der Beek coming back into the squad and taking his position. And for me, it is now completely up to Bruno Fernandes. It looks like the next 18 months could be make or break. However, I certainly think that it's a good sign that he has been given a new contract. I would like to think that Ten Hag had some sort of say in this, and if that's the case, it would be fair to assume that there is some sort of plan in place. 
But as always, I want to know what you think. Will Fernandez be a key part in Eric Ten Hag's rebuild over the next couple of seasons, or will he find himself losing his place to someone like Donny van der Beek as he returns to the squad? Get in the comments down below and make sure to let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys for watching and I'll of course see you in the next one.